Hello and welcome to UAT Time within the United Country special by First Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website firstua.com. I'm Sergei Vilichansky. And I am Olivier Drin. UAT Time is dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by addressing the red Ukraine to the rest of the world. Life is changing on a daily basis. New technologies mean new approach to life. And even hardships can be turned into blessings. And what was intended for bad turns out to be good. Our guest today is Alexandre Savsunenko, Dr of biochemistry and co-founder of several startups. Welcome. Hi guys, thanks for inviting me. All right, thank you for stopping by for a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, one of the first things I wanted to ask you is this. Uh, let me confirm. You were born in Donetsk. Yes, I did. Now we know Donetsk is occupied by the pro-Russian, Russian-backed uh, terrorists. And so w give us a little bit background how did, how did it happen that you had to leave the town what what's happening back um, then so i was born in donetsk yes and i am very proud of this <coughs> i really am proud of my city and i'm proud of donetsk people uh, i all my life i was pro ukrainian and pro european i did my studies in france i had my degree uh, in france and after that, I came back to Donetsk with the crazy idea of bringing innovative technologies and Western knowledge to Donetsk industries. Uh -huh. So I went uh, to Donetsk and I started to work at a big chemical facility, factory. Uh, I was trying to do innovations there, to do quality control, how it should be done, to do mm. the ecological control, how it should be done. And I worked there for about half a year when all this situation with Crimea began to unfold. And I stopped working at some point in time because I was working in Horlivka. Mm -hmm. Oh. I was going from Donetsk to Horlivka every day to work and back. I was just watching how these blog posts, mm -hmm. yeah, how they appear and disappear, change their locations. Uh, one day it was an extremely strange experience. In the morning I was going to Horlivka and I saw this blog post with Ukrainian flag and I saw oh. the people there and the same day in the evening I was going back and I saw same people, same equipment, but they changed the flag. That's interesting. Uh, the, 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 the chemistry company of Gorovka is Tirol. Uh, no, there is, there is another one. No, no there one? is another one, yeah. No. <coughs> and th that was already bad. In few days I was a spectator of this how they changed the flag on the main city, city administration building. Mm -hmm. I watched it. I mm -hmm. went there and I watched it. I was like, I was staying in a crowd. Everybody around was like, Russia, Russia, Russia. I was like almost crying, you know, it was impossible to see. And at, the, at that point, I understood that the situation is going to be only worse. And like, there is no turning back. Something happened, something changed and dr dramatically. So. I had partners in United States. I, I worked with them for many years, mm -hmm. and they called me. They said, "Like we are watching same news, just you have to leave. It's obvious." Okay. And uh, and th those those persons who say Russia, 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 they were the same that say um, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Or that was that they were very different people. Um, New person. Or uh, you saw them before yes. in Donetsk? You know, actually, yes, I think so. You know, <coughs> they, were, they were real. Th that's the, the worst part of this situation. There was no imitation, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It was not an imitation of some bite people, mm -hmm. bribed people. Mm -hmm. They were really honest in their mm -hmm. behavior. And this is the worst thing here. Like, there were a lot of people, and they were really shouting Russia because they do believe in all these. Mm -hmm. And how, how we can explain that? Propaganda, or maybe they are very old person, or Soviet nostalgia? Well, how how you can explain? A um, few days before that situation, I was still at my work, mm -hmm. at my factory, and I went out of the office to smoke mm -hmm. with factory workers. It was kind of fun for me. I was like, I was wearing a suit, but sometimes I went down to, to smoke cigarette with guys who just came out of the uh, heavy <coughs> facilities, yeah? And I heard them talking to each other. You know, the Nazis from west of Ukraine are already coming here in trains to kill our children. 
and to take our homes. Yeah, that's propaganda. That's propaganda. That's propaganda. Yeah. I have, I, I try to ask like, how you even get this information? Who told you? Like, I heard my friend <coughs> told me, my friend told me, yeah. that's all. They did a marvelous job in propaganda. They're professionals, we have to admit it. Well, yeah, I, I would say we lost, uh, you know, most of that territory in the, in the, in the informational, uh, mm -hmm. you know, grounds way before yeah. the events, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it's true that we know that, you know, Lugansk is the closest to Russia's border territory, mm -hmm. and then Donetsk, they have always been, you know, uh, primarily, uh, you know, oriented, you know, traveling to Russia back and forth, and uh, yeah, a lot of relatives. But but it's true. It's interesting that uh, that somehow somebody put this thought into their mind that they that you know. Uh, somebody from the West wants to come and attack them, you know? How did it happen? Yeah, yeah I know that in the propaganda they say that NATO is in Ukraine, that uh, US, US soldiers are in Donbass. No, but that's fight. later. But what I'm saying is how can those people that could travel for vacation to Carpathian Mountains the next day say that they, those guys yeah, that leave in the West are coming to attack them? I mean, they, they're saying that that's us and that's them. Are you sure that the, those workers uh, went to the west of Ukraine uh, uh, one day? Well, I don't think so. You don't, you don't think so? Like 70% of uh, Donetsk region never left Donetsk region. Yeah, OK. That's so that's, that's one of the that's issues, actually. Yeah. That's one of the problems. And I, I, I know, uh, and then I think, uh, and you know, uh, Sergei, in our program, we, this is a program for abroad. Uh, we are broadcasting in 30 countries by, by satellite. And I, I think we have to underline this propaganda. How much this propaganda is efficient and how much this is ridiculous. Nazi come from the West yeah. to kill us. To kill children. Yeah. You know, and uh, our, uh, our uh, abroad, uh, the person who, who can see us, they, they, they are, I think, very surprised about that. Well, propaganda just builds up. They start from small mm -hmm. and then they increase, increase, increase level of stupidity. But at the same time, they're building on the basis of previous wave of propaganda. Yeah. And somehow they manage to arrive <coughs> to this point when people can honestly believe then Nazis from West coming. Do you have some news of your friend in Danias now? Because uh, No. no? Um, my parents moved here. Everybody is important for me moved here. Okay. Nothing, nothing left, right. basically. Right. I know very well Golovka because I was in Golovka in 1994 because you have a French institute in Golovka. Yes, actually. There is and what's happened with this French institute now? I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know. But there was, yes, it's true. There was a big center of uh, linguistical <coughs> studies yeah, yeah. and the French institute. I was invited there. Yeah. And another nice part of this story, not nice, of course, obviously, in Donetsk, in that time when I was working in Horlivka, I was volunteering in Donetsk in uh, contemporary art institution mm -hmm. called Isolasia. Mm -hmm. Maybe you heard about it. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a really a branch of Western culture mm -hmm. in most depressed region of Donetsk. Mm -hmm. It was a center of contemporary art installations, performances, big guys coming, and it was like in the old factory in the depressed region of the Donetsk. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about this, that this place was occupied one of the f one of the first places to be occupied in Donetsk. Mm -hmm. The next building after the city city center administration, they, they occup occupied this place mm -hmm. because for them it was kind of a totally different culture. Okay. Th yes, okay. I know I know this story because I have some artist friends and uh, they, uh, they they destroyed uh, the art. Uh, they destroyed the yeah, art, the sculptures. Because one yeah. of my one of my friend artist friend, um, she. She had some sculptures of of her in this in this uh, museum. I can see this in this institute, and they they shoot yeah. the, the sculpture. Well, it seems like yeah, they're rebellion against uh, anything that they don't understand. Yeah, you know that's uh, one of the uh, psychological traits of the crowd. You know, if uh, this it, it's pretty much a similar uh, social. Uh, 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 set up of the crowd, they, uh, you know, they uh, reject 
the uh, mm. anything strange, anything uh, that they consider, if, especially if their chief tells them that this is uh, what kills your children, then they will, they will destroy it. Yeah. And what do but you think about the future of <coughs> this uh, place? Coming back to the this time, yeah? I have no idea, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I know only one thing, that to change the situation, we really, it's obvious, but we really have to build a new Ukraine. Yeah. We have to be economically stronger. Mm -hmm. We have to have a new army. Mm -hmm. We have to fight the corruption. Yeah. All those things that everybody's talking for the last few years, mm -hmm. we, we finally have to do it. Well, and let's move to the issues of your uh, co uh, uh, contemporary, your um, uh, uh, current mm -hmm. activities, because that's what really I'm interested yeah. to, to find out. Because it seems like the situation is out there yeah. for a long time. Yeah. You know, so uh, I mean, we can talk all we want about what we want it to be, but, but what, yes, but it, what, we what about you now? <laughs> yeah. Now, now, what I want uh, to find out is uh, this terrible situation that took place, which forced you to leave your home, leave your everything, your everything, pretty much, uh, make your parents, your friends leave the, the the whole territory where you've lived all of your life you've known all you know each bush or each road everything yeah. now uh, and we know some you know these people are called displaced people you know they or refugees but pretty much so they f find it quite difficult to you know uh, adopt in a new place in a new culture but you went all the way to the United States so how did it happen? Because I had an opportunity. Okay. I just basically I had a usual touristic visa and a friends and business partners I used to work with in the United States and they just say move here and we'll figure out later okay. what's going to happen. All right. And we figured it out. Okay. I I worked at their place. I got the real job visa. I was a CTO at their company, uh, also a startup company. I worked there for some time. And then I moved uh, to another city and I started my own company, okay. which was based in, and it is still based on scientific advances that were done here in Kiev okay. by real Ukrainian scientists. Okay. Ukrainian science exists. Okay, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, That's good to know. Yeah. <coughs> and we commercialized one of the technologies which was created here, and mm -hmm. we still work with Ukrainian labs. Okay. And we take orders basically in Europe and United States, and the production and lab activities is performed here. We are doing some biological tests, DNA-based tests mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about health, about your best lifestyle options from DNA point of view, so we can tell whether it's better for you to drink coffee or drink tea, whether you you have to wake up early or lately, etc., etc. Based always on your DNA. I always wanted to know that. Everybody wow. Wants to know, Somehow, yeah. you know, I, you know, when I get up early, oh, yeah. sometimes <laughs> I feel good, but most of the times not. It depends on many, many different things. <laughs> but <laughs> where, where, where is you? your startup? In which city? In, in North Carolina. North it's Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, a city called Raleigh. Yeah. Yeah, small city in, in a so-called triangle. One of. Uh, the I, I lived. Uh, I lived uh, three years in South Carolina. I was near Greenville, maybe yeah, you know. Yeah, of course. I, I was there, Greenville. Yes, I was even there. Who, who hasn't been there? In Greenville, this is <laughs> the center Everybody of the world. <laughs> right. By the way, uh, if, you wanna f if you want to find us uh, on the internet, we are on Facebook. So facebook.com slash UAT time. Find us and tell us what you think and uh, give us your feedback. All right. So let's come back now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, being in the States, you pretty much uh, employ some uh, companies or people yeah, in, uh, Ukraine, in Ukraine. In Ukraine, yes, yes. So you give them the job. Yes. Which is good. Which is good. <laughs> right. yeah, th there is a US dollars influx yeah. <laughs> from the United States to Ukraine that maybe not so big as I would like to be, okay. but anything which goes here it's good. I all think. right, all right. That's, uh, I like the tendency. So Then I'm really impressed with local scientists I work with. Okay. They're really smart and bright minds. We don't have an advanced lab technology here because it requires a lot of capital investments. Mm -hmm. But what is good here is brains. And yeah. so we are building right now a software-based software which is 
used to do some biotechnological calculations. Okay. You don't need lab equipment, but you need just smart guys to do mm -hmm. it. And this is the, the way of, for Ukraine. Like everybody says now, Ukraine should be an IT nation, yep. a startup nation. Yeah, yeah. That's the only way to have a capital influx here. That's yeah. Interesting. Yes. So I'm, I'm really into this. I, I believe in this idea. You think this is, if I underline a fact, for you, your analysis is that the key point of development for Ukraine is IT. Yes. IT in different forms. Mm -hmm. It can be IT for biotechnology, but not outsourcing, basically. We, are, mm -hmm. we should be closing our outsourcing mm -hmm. uh, powers mm -hmm. and switch them to producing our own products. Because you think, you think all the brains, all the, the professionalism are there to yes. do something. There is enough very smart IT guys yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Their salaries are less than in Europe and United States, yeah. but already high, mm -hmm. already high. Mm -hmm. if, you are, if you are a good IT guy now in Ukraine, you're more or less okay. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's what we should do. But how do you think it's going to be, it's, it's going to be probably not that easy to switch from the, being the outsource, uh, because the outsource is, means, you know, real cash right here, right there. That's you know, why we have, to in, we have to wait until big guys, big outsource guys accumulate some cash in hands and then mm -hmm. they're smart enough to invest it mm -hmm. into the product development. And we have nice products in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. We have like, just yesterday I was talking to a guy from Dr. Alex. Mm -hmm. They're doing a software to run hospitals mm -hmm. and do patient system mm -hmm. and electronic health, ca health cards. Mm -hmm. And they're selling it to the United States and they comply with all United States regulations. Mm -hmm. So there are nice examples of things like that. It works, but we need more and more and more and more. Another problem is I don't want to incorporate in Ukraine today. Mm -hmm. Never open a company in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I will, like in United States, I have to pay taxes once a year, and some taxes like four times per year. But it's pretty much easy. I hire accountant online. Mm -hmm. I just give him access to our database, and in in one day, I have all the tax reports I need. Mm -hmm. Pay them, no questions asked. Everything's clear. Super super easy. Yeah. Imagine to open a company here. It's a full time hassle. accountant, full time like connections in tax service, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and a lot of certifications, regulations, licensing. Sorry, guys. Unfortunately. It's very difficult just to open a company here. But uh, uh, you, you talk about investments here. Yeah? Uh, what is your analysis about investments here in Ukraine? Because uh, you say that uh, you want to wait, maybe. Uh, and what, what about your investment in IT in Ukraine? Uh, what's going on now? To be honest, I'm not proficient in this area. Mm -hmm. I'm not an IT guy. I work, I work a lot with IT guys, mm -hmm. and I know that most of them are not thinking about switching into products. Okay. Like, they mm -hmm. dream about it, but, but they have no experience. Mm -hmm. It's a totally <coughs> different gameplay. Mm -hmm. because and it's a risk, and it's a risk. risk. And it's yeah. marketing. It's a PR on the European and US markets. You have to know how to do it. You have to mm -hmm. know how to do the outreach to journalists. You, have to, you, you yeah. need to have somebody there. Sitting I th there. I think it's quite early right now to say that you know we're uh, ready to move to away from the being the outsourcing mm -hmm. uh, IT um, brains mm -hmm. for the Western companies. Yeah. But even the fact that you know, I think for 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 this period of time, it is good because it's it's it's, it's, uh, still, cash it's still cash comes into the country. People get employed. They they develop their own projects as they do, as they work on the mm -hmm. outsourcing. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people that can, if if they, you know, like some people I know that if they can do the outsourcing job well done, they are the ones that are thinking of their own projects. Uh, the, you know, along yeah, the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just waiting and accumulating and, you know, getting ready. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just. Uh, you know, some things are just going. They, there is a period of evolution that needs to take place. You know? Yes. Maybe, maybe we have to talk more about I your own company, maybe, because uh, I am very, very fascinated about uh, you did your study in, in, in France. Yeah. That's the first point. <laughs> very good point. And the second one is you are, very, you are a young person, OK? Not uh, so young, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you are a very young person. Young person, OK. And you, you uh, are the founder of yeah. several 
startups. Yeah, several, let's, not let's, only one. Okay, okay, let's, okay, let's, let's talk okay, about okay, that. Okay, Come okay. on. <laughs> not, not actually several. I'm the profitable one is the only one, the Titan O, okay. <laughs> which, which I'm like, that's my main position to, to do this Titan O thing. It, we play around DNA sequencing and the interpretation of DNA that's data. That's so easy, you know, no. just let's play around <laughs> DNA, you know, that's just a... Just, just you wake up in the morning and say, yes, I, I want to play with DNA. Do. Yeah, we also um, founded here in Ukraine this project called Evox. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I came back to Ukraine. I, I, just no reason to be here. Actually, I can be in the United States, mm -hmm. but I just prefer to live here. But at this, because at this point in time, all I, all I need for my productivity is my notebook. Mm -hmm. So I stay here. And of course, I, have, I had some free time. So I decided to invest part of my time into politics and uh, Ukraine reforms, etc., etc. I started from running for city council. Mm -hmm. for, for, I started to be in elections. Okay. I lost, obviously. Well, well, but it was a nice experience, experience yes. great experience, yes. And then I started to think, like, what's next? Where should I put my efforts? And then I discovered these guys. They call themselves IDF Reforms Labs. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are trying to reform Ukraine using IT technologies mm -hmm. because it's obvious when you have smart IT guys, mm -hmm. just gather them and ask them to do something for Ukraine. And for example, I was, I was not directly participating into this project. I was mostly spectating them and taking notes of how to do a successful mm -hmm. project. Uh, you, you know Prozoro, obviously, yeah? yeah? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Prozoro is a great thing. It uh -huh. changed a lot of, uh, it defeated a lot of corruption in Ukraine. But the problem with Prozoro is still there because there is still a central server, a central computer, which is owned by government, yeah? Okay. And all the data is aggregated there. You have an access from different providers, as you know, yeah? Yes. But there is still a central server. And now they say the friend of a server administrator wins the tender, usually. Okay. So there is still some right, points. So there's, Prozoro is the uh, platform for the government uh, uh, trade uh, or purchases, so that's where a lot of um, mm -hmm. uh, corruption takes place. Yeah, to, yeah. you know, has taken place for all these years. Now, with through Prozoro, it has cut away a lot of it, but still, just as you say, something's you know, there. Something. Somebody, you know, somebody who is in charge of the database, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he can uh, control. So there's, well, again, but it's you yeah, know, and, gradual. and these guys, they. There is a technology called blockchain, the okay. technology which is Bitcoin based on, mm -hmm. the famous Bitcoin. Yes. Yeah? And this technology allows to, you to build a system without central servers. Mm. Like when nobody owns the data and nobody owns the system, it's done like a communist dream, mm -hmm. you know, totally flat system with no hierarchy there. So they build a new system totally for free, based on volunteers. They build a new system for auctions run by government mm -hmm. based on blockchain when there is no central server and government owns nothing. And the first bidding, I think it was already done. It should be done in March. The first mm -hmm. bid on this auction should be done. And this is just an example of the things that like volunteers can do now. And this Evox project, it's the same blockchain-based project. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it aims to do a transparent elections when there is no central server which collects all the data mm -hmm. and you can modify the data there. Exactly. Like, and all the system as f is flat and each point can control a any other point of data, you know? Mm -hmm. So I can see who voted in your region, you can see who voted in my region and all this happening in real time and there is no way you can forge the data. It's, it's complicated, there is a lot of cool math behind. Yes, but that's avoid corruption. Yes. Okay, that's, that's great. <laughs> well, we're talking about financial corruption and uh, political as well, you know. This with is the this, you, this is the project. Uh, you have some link with the, no. Uh, we, we did an interview of uh, a person from Kiev Mogi Academy. They have yeah. e-governance. You know, they, you are you. We are all them? connected. We all okay. know each other, I suppose. Okay, yeah. that's good. We yes. all connected. Yeah, it's good. I think uh, you know because what you're talking about is something out of this world. And it's difficult to imagine how those old-fashioned uh, political corrupted guys, guys that yeah. have been in power and w uh, w within the government state budget for so many years, 
for them to just have this enough political will to say, yeah, let's not control this. Let's Prozora let it happen. happen. Yeah, that's true. Prozora happens. That's true. So, there so are, we have to believe. There are, uh, there, we, have, we have hopes. And but there is a hope. Happen, but that's belong to the government. Yes, but it is no. already much, much, much better. Yes, it, it, it is a revolution in a sense. Yeah, okay. Over the 25 years, it has cut away a lot of different corruption structures Whoa, okay. and systems. Mm -hmm. But the next step probably is the blockchain. Blockchain, yeah. Blockchain. Blockchain mm -hmm. is a step for every business. All right. It's mm -hmm. a future of business, like in, in 10 years, every, everything's going to be based on blockchain, that's for sure. Well, uh, I'm thinking how to apply blockchain to my company. But there is no connection between DNA data analysis <laughs> and blockchain technology at this moment. But and I don't think there is a connection between blockchain and UAT time as well. <laughs> you, know? Know. <laughs> you know, nobody can just do the job without us. You know. <laughs> but, uh, and unfortunately, blockchain cannot extend our time. Yeah. Yeah. 25 minutes is, is running. Yeah. Uh, now the time is up. Uh, then thank, thank you. you very much. Yes. Thank you, guys. It, it was, was a pleasure for me. It was United Country UAT time by First Ukraine. Our guest was Alexander Savsunenko, doctor of biochemistry and co-founder of several startups. Olivier Duin and Sergei Vilchansky were working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we show to you the Red Ukraine. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon. See you soon.